Good afternoon. After 13 years, the family of Christopher Alder have received a landmark apology from the government. It's agreed to pay compensation to the family of the former soldier who collapsed and died at a police station in Hull in 1998. In a moment, I'll be speaking to a legal expert who's been representing them. But first, our political co our correspondent Vicky Johnson has the background to the case. For the past 13 years, Janet Older's been conducting a relentless campaign to find out more about how her brother Christopher died in police custody. The 37-year-old former paratrooper had been involved in a fight in 1998. He was taken first to hospital and then to the custody suite at Queen's Gardens Police Station, where CCTV pictures captured the moment he died. This could happen to my son, and for me to believe that I could never, ever do anything about it is... I couldn't stand that. Five officers were charged back in 1999 with misconduct, but the trial was postponed until after the inquest, which happened in 2000, when the jury decided Christopher had been killed unlawfully. As a result, five Humberside police officers were charged with manslaughter, but during their trial in 2002, those charges were dropped and they were cleared of all offences. The following year, all five officers were cleared after facing disciplinary action. But finally, Humberside Police did apologise in 2006 after an inquiry by the newly formed Independent Police Complaints Commission strongly criticised the independence and effectiveness of the previous investigations. The time is therefore right for me publicly to apologise to Christopher Alder's family for our failure to treat Christopher with sufficient compassion and to the desired standard that night. Today's unprecedented apology from the government comes just weeks after it was revealed that Christopher's body is still lying in a whole mortuary, despite his very public funeral 11 years ago. Vicky Johnson, BBC Look North. Well, I'm joined now by Karina Ferguson from the human rights organisation Liberty. Now, you've been representing the older family. What does this outcome mean for them? Well, uh, this is the first time that the family have had um, a, a formal recognition from the state that um, the state authorities as a whole let them down in failing um, to hold anyone accountable for Christopher's death. Um, and, and that in itself is um, significant, but it's really appalling that the family had to go to these extraordinary lengths um, and, and all this time um, to get to this point. Um, uh, and it's taken the, the sheer determination of somebody like Janet um, to get justice for her brother that's enabled this to happen. Well, as you said, no one has ever held been, been held accountable for Christopher's death, and that's what the family wanted. So is this apology enough? Um, I don't think the apology can ever um, rectify what went wrong here uh, and the way that Christopher was treated um, and the failings in, in his uh, in the investigation into his death um, were really deplorable um, uh, and you know nothing can ever uh, compensate or rectify that um, but it is at least welcome that finally um, the, the family have some uh, acknowledgement at least that um, the human rights um, of them and of Christopher were breached in this case and that was the right to life um, the right not to be uh, tortured or treated inhumanely um, and the right not to be discriminated against because there were indicators here that race, uh, that Christopher's race was a factor in his death. And how unusual is an apology like this from the government? As far as we're aware, this is the first time that the government has used this procedure um, to issue a unilateral declaration, that's what, uh, the technical term for it, um, in the uh, European Court of Human Rights. Um, and today the European Court has issued a judgment which accepts that declaration um, uh, and holds that that is then therefore the end of the case. Um, uh, and uh, as I say, uh, as far as we're aware, that's the first time that this procedure has been used in relation to a death in custody in the UK. So it is significant. But I think um, what, what we all and the family uh, would like to be reassured of is that this sort of situation could never happen again. Um, and sadly, there is a problem in terms of accountability for deaths in custody in this country. Um, and, and no police officers have ever been um, convicted uh, following deaths of this kind. Karina, uh, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us. Karina Ferguson from the human rights organisation Liberty, re representing the older family. And of course, there will be more on that story on Look North at 6.30 tonight.